Uh, tennis is Houston. At the present time, we're getting good TV, but uh, no downlink voice right now. Stand by.
up towards Seattle, Washington, looks like some cloud cover. And the uh, North Pole still has that same complete coverage as northern Canada over to Russia, the same uh, cloud coverage that we have observed all the way on our uh, uh, trip out from uh, Cape Kennedy starting last Sunday. It's a very beautiful, beautiful view as uh, we start our return uh, visit, uh, journey there to the Earth. And uh, we do have a great attitude for seeing it all the time as we slowly rotate going back home to the Earth. We'll have the Earth out one window and then the moon out the other and later on the sun. Uh, at this time, again, you can see that the majority of the features are strictly clouds. The blue you see down uh, near the um, bottom of your screen there is the uh, lower uh, South Pacific Ocean down towards the Galapagos Islands. Uh, how's your, your picture, Houston? Over. Coming in beautifully, Tom. Uh, Roger. A good relative size for both the Earth and the Moon. Uh, Tom mentioned one. Another one might be if you took a if you took a nickel and held it about 18 inches from your eyeball. Uh, that's what the size of the Earth, uh, the diameter of the Earth, and the diameter of the Moon appear to us at the present time. All right, you understand this uh, tennis okay. ball, uh, tennis ball at arm's length. Uh, I, it's more like a nickel at uh, at arm's length uh, uh, for the uh, average eyeball. Roger. Uh, the tennis ball is a good size. Uh, just looking at it at, at a distance, uh, but in a correlation, it would be to, to that. And how's, Houston, how's the color coming through? Mostly whitish clouds to the right of the set, and the darkish brown in there towards the California coast, and the blue down in the South Pacific. Over. Roger, the, co the color is coming in here with high fidelity. Sounds great. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, we're going to take you inside the cockpit for just a couple of minutes here. Over. Roger. Okay, we've got the interior scene. Looks like you're looking at the uh, dosimeter or the radiometer there. Uh, Ten, this is Houston. Uh, we're not getting. Uh, very much illumination. Is that uh, John at the uh, nav base? Uh, Roger. Uh, we can make out the the wall of the, the spacecraft clearly there, but uh, as for John's back, it's pretty well shadowed right now. Okay, John's, uh, John's using the optics in a rather unorthodox fashion right at the moment. He appears to be upside down just just, just a second. Uh, I'll see if I can turn him right side up for you. Okay, now we have John right side up, but the spacecraft is upside down. Uh, we've got still got a problem here. Stand by. I, I guess we'll just have to accept the spacecraft right side up and John upside down. Here he comes. Okay, that's a lot better. That's what the average space navigator looks like after 543 marks. <laughs> you can observe the patch over one eye to help him adapt. <laughs> Roger, you really got to 
Well, you might think it was some ancient pirate, but actually, this is what the modern-day space navigator <laughs> looks like after all the marks that he's been taking. He's done a fantastic job on, on determining the altitude of the moon's surface and shooting all the star sightings. Over. You can see John's star chart above uh, his optics right there, and above that are some of the uh, codes that are used to operate the, uh, the computer, the guidance computer on board. Roger. Okay, uh, this is what happens to the optics in zero gravity. Once you start a screw or a bolt turning up here, it just keeps right on going forever. Just absolutely no friction associated with operation of moving parts. That's why we have to stick everything together with glue. And since they've been rotating like this, I've lost both of them at least once. And you don't think it's hard for a one-eyed guy to find a, something like this when it's running around the cockpit. You're not with it. I'll back off and uh, show TP here. We've got Tom on the screen now. Uh, Ten, this is Houston. Tom's voice isn't coming through. Uh, as you can see, uh, all of us have grown a little bit of a beard in the six days uh, since we left Cape Kennedy. It's been a fantastic uh, voyage out here. And it's, it's certainly been a fight, and we hope we've been able to share a part of it with you by sending back some pictures. Roger, and they've been some very impressive pictures, too. Again, just like we showed you one time before, it, uh, once you're in zero gravity and you're adapted to it, it makes no difference whether you're right side up or upside down. And we have been floating all over the cockpit doing chores, making attitude maneuvers, shooting stars, as you can see John there. And we'll say we feel in really great health. In fact, we've felt great ever since we climbed aboard the Saturn V rocket. Uh, on Sunday, and we're certainly looking forward to return to the Earth, and I think we'll be about as healthy when we return as when we left. Over. Roger. Here you see a pair of our scissors that we opened the food with just slowly floating. Okay, we'll go over to the right side of the cockpit. And here's Gene Cernan. As you 
Right now, Gene and John are vying for the uh, the basic contest of who's going the best mustache. For for Jack Smith's sake, this is how we take targets of opportunity. Well, this has been a it's been a, a great trip so far. We we worked hard, but it's been very challenging and uh, very very uh, rewarding to us as a team here. And I hope to our team down there because uh, uh, we couldn't be where we are if it wasn't for all you guys down there. And we really appreciate it. All right, you're done. I'll pass it on to everyone here in the Moke around the other shifts. And uh, I guess it goes without saying that we admire the fine performance that you all have turned in up there. Thank you, Bruce. It's just really been great. Uh, that pass down to the lunar surface at 50,000 feet in the rendezvous and uh, then shooting uh, the top part of Snoopy around the sun and all the landmark tracking and viewing uh, the moon as we saw it and also that climb out this morning as we left the moon. Uh, that's something you just won't ever forget. And it was so fa fantastic that uh, we just uh, wanted to share it there with you. Over. Roger. Here you see Gene turning around a flashlight that's turned on. Now one thing we use in the spacecraft because we do have the problem of zero G is uh, uh, some material called Velcro and here you'll see Gene putting a light on one of the knobs and uh, John is also putting a pencil there. In fact with just one small piece he can hold this whole camera that we have. It's only uh, less than one inch square, but yet it has the cohesive force to hold uh, the desired object to the surface. Well, we're going to end our we're going to end our TV cast now by again just showing you the the Earth and the Moon for one quick glance and uh, Gene will take uh, the camera and point it out to the moon. Uh, Dan, this is Houston. Is there anything we could see in the vicinity of the tunnel regarding uh, condensation or uh, anything up there? Uh, that <laughs> I will take you up in our tunnel there. We got a lot of gear stored in it. Okay, you're looking at the edge of the, the hatch. There's the hatch handle right there. The basic mechanism of the hatch handle mechanism that opens. Now, if you can see it, there's condensation all over there. It's all uh, wet, and it, right up there under the tunnel vent lights around the seal is uh, drops of water and condensing out. Can you, can you see that water on a tube? Does it show up on a monitor? And there's, there's condensation on the walls of the, of that, of the tunnel as far down as the, as the top of the, uh, top of the hatch surface. But there's very little electrical wiring in the tunnel, so we're not really worried about that. Uh, Roger, we can't make out uh, much in the way of water. We can see a little bit of glistening occasionally. That's about uh, the size of it. That's it. That's it. Well, there's a thin, there's a thin film of drops all over the, all over the uh, hatch, and uh... Roger, we caught something there. Can you, can you see that? Roger.
That's the same type of film that's all over the hatch and, and, the, uh, and the tone walls. So a lot on the uh, hatch uh, on a pressure equalization valve. Look at it right there. Roger. Bright, shiny spots are water. And like I said uh, before this morning, it's 20 degrees cooler in the tunnel. Very nice up there. The pressure equalization valve is uh, covered with water. Well, er every piece of equipment in there, particularly the uh, steel pieces are around the rim of the seal and the pressure equalization valve are covered with a thin film of water drops. And you can see some uh, even on the hatch mechanism. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see the alignment errors? Yes, that's that you used to align the hatch with. Right, the alignment arrow comes through nicely. Yeah, in fact, we could read. Uh, I guess it was gearbox disconnect a few minutes ago. Roger. This uh, hatch weighs about 80 pounds, a little better. And in one T, and in that with the. Uh, a man it has very great difficulty positioning this thing and installing it and locking it by himself. And uh, zero gravity, uh, it's extremely easy to, to manipulate and operate. And, and it was even easy to wrestle it by these hoses the other day, which we had to take it out, put it in uh, two or three times while we were checking out the lunar module, which was attached just above this hatch. But it was a piece of cake to haul it in and out. Reports like that are good news for our AAP package handling problems. I didn't see it. I didn't say it'd be easy for AAP, Bruce. I, I don't believe you can see it, but uh, there's some big uh, drops of water about the size of a quarter right where John's putting his hand up there right now, uh, right opposite that tunnel light uh, and opposite the end of the uh, hatch handle. It's on the, uh, the vertical portion of the hatch. Right now, John has one of our absorbent towels and is uh, taking, mopping up uh, the water around in that area on the hatch handle. Roger. Okay, we're getting an outside view again. As a, Roger, as a matter of fact, I was just up in the tunnel feeling of that. That uh, stuff on the outer hatch seal is not water, it's ice. Roger, ice.
about 40,000 miles away uh, both the Earth, uh, from the moon, uh, about 45,000 miles away. Looks like about a, fills up the size of about a nickel at about 18 inches. So with that, we'll, uh, we'll leave you, Apollo 10, uh, from Tom, John, and Gene uh, saying, we're proud to be here, we're proud to represent so many people back there. Uh, it's been a pleasure, it's been hard work, but it's been a tremendous challenge, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, completing successful landing, and thank you all again.